Okay, well, thank you for coming to okay. my okay. talk today. Uh, I'm talking about getting started with version control. Uh -huh. uh, I work at a company called Brandco, and we make uh, custom websites on a daily basis. And for the longest time, we never had anything that tracked our changes that we made on a daily basis. Essentially, we would just FTP into the server and make our changes on the fly. And if something broke, we just simply uh, used our guts and looked around and, and, and uh, tried to fix whatever the problem was. But essentially, we would have a, uh, the problem was that we had things that were broken on our servers, um, and sometimes we have no, have no idea where to start. So if you're like a lot of people who run that same kind of system, this is kind of what your backups look like, right? I, you have a backup folder on your computer. Um, here's all the websites that you're maintaining on a daily basis. And if you go into one of these, you might see something like this. Uh, that's my version one of it, that's my version two of the site, version three, and essentially what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to that site, I'll say, okay, this is the third time I'm making an edit to this site, so I clone the whole site into that directory. Um, and, and essentially, this is one of my more complicated examples, but you can see how crazy it got over there near the end. Um, essentially, because I knew that it was in order of um, the title, of the directory, I even added nine underscore nine just to show an, an order in my directory. And in addition to that, I started downloading the um, the whole site twice, um, one in backup and one in current. Um, so that way I could have my backup just in case I broke anything and anything in my current um, changes. Um, I would just push that whole repo or that whole directory up onto the site. So that ended up being very inefficient for me, and I ended up wasting a lot of time, um, especially if this was a big site or a big theme or something like that. Every, every single time I wanted to make a change, I had to wait for these files to download, and essentially I'd be twiddling my thumbs. Um, so why should you, you guys use version control? That's not, that's, that was the big aha moment for me, but here's some of the other, other advantages. Um, having a complete overview of your project and seeing every single change that's ever been made. In addition to that, you can um, uh, like see what changes were made and, and essentially roll back to a previous version. Um, it saves space. So like uh, you saw before, essentially my, I had maybe 15, 30 copies of uh, the site, right, on my computer. Essentially, uh, now in my repository, and, and the example we're gonna use during this presentation is HTML5 boilerplate, uh, everything is being uh, stored inside a hidden uh, directory called .git. And it's essentially saving all my changes and tagging everything for me automatically, so I don't have to, uh, I don't have to have tons of copies of uh, my current project, and it's, it saves a lot of space. Um, again, it's, it's gonna, every single time I commit or make a change to my current uh, project, it's gonna save, uh, tell me who made that commit, uh, when it was made, and uh, any messages that were um, added to that commit. So this can help uh, a, a lot with debugging. Uh, in addition to that, it uh, creates more backups of your of your project. Essentially, because you're putting it on a repository, um, you know, obviously you can, you can actually run Git locally, but you can also push it up to a live repository like uh, GitHub or Bitbucket. Um, and essentially, anybody who has has this downloaded uh, has an additional copy of your project. Um, and in addition, it's not just a copy, but it's a a backup of all the history in your repository as well. So that is uh, that can help other people um, help you debug your projects. Uh, branches are a very big feature for uh, version control as well. Essentially, it's it's the it's essentially my version of copy paste. So 
it's taking a, a re repository, taking it to the side and doing a bunch of crazy stuff to it and not being afraid of breaking the live site or your, your, your project in a, a live environment. And essentially, if that branch doesn't work out or this, your tests don't work out, you can always just get rid of that branch completely. Um, and, there's, and again, whenever you're ready, it, you could, your feature could take a month to implement, three months or a year. Whenever you're ready, you can merge it in, and it's going to automatically uh, combine with anything that you've added to your master branch over time. But why Git, though? There's a lot of systems out there. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody here has heard of Subversion, but essentially Git is focused a lot on snapshots, and essentially it is fo focused a lot more on data than Subversion. Um, it emphasizes local uh, development, and uh, it's a lot of people consider it to be very simplistic with uh, it only having three states. And those three, uh, those three states are essentially your working directory, your staging area, and your, your Git directory on um, your, uh, wherever you're publishing uh, your repository. Um, so again, that work, working directory is going to be local, um, staging area as well, and whenever you're ready, you can push uh, to your live directory. Now, essentially when I was convinced to move most everything over to version control. Um, essentially, this was at WordCamp Chicago last year. I was talking to somebody, and he said all code that you write should be on version control. And I think that really struck a chord with me because uh, essentially I saw version control as a backup system for the longest time. And what I realized version control, what version control really is, is a tool that helps you debug the changes that you've made to a project over time. So decision 2014, uh, every single site that we launched from then on uh, went out on version control. Uh, the challenges, uh, making sure the team was up to speed, um, and committing often. Uh, one of the biggest problems when starting off is having a very cluttered repository. Um, I have an interesting example to show you uh, with that specifically later on. And not using um, the debugging tech techniques as needed. So a lot, a lot of the times people use Git as a, again, as, just as a backup system when in actuality they don't realize that when they're stuck in a situation and they're not sure how to fix a problem, they could use the debugging tools uh, built into Git in order to solve those problems. So before I go any further, yes, I do use the terminal. Um, I used a GUI system for a long time, and uh, essentially version control is was built on, uh, or Git is built on, on the terminal. Uh, but there are GUI systems that help you get started with that, uh, such as Tower. Um, I'm forgetting the name of another source tree is another one. It essentially creates uh, an easy, it, it's easier to get started. And honestly, if you're wanting to just dive into it and learn how to use it, um, I, can, I would suggest starting off with one of those. But what I found recently, since 2014, now that's 2015, about a year later, and it actually took me about a year to realize I it's actually a little bit inhibiting to use those GUI systems because I'm not using uh, all the debug features that were available uh, with Git. And uh, sometimes it seems a little bit more straightforward. So approaching that first problem, getting your team up to speed, um, this is going to be a little quick introduction to um, the version control commands. Obviously, installing Git, um, it, you, it's a uh, Google way for anybody who's looking for that. Um, in order, if you have a project locally and you're wanting to uh, get it started uh, with Git, <laughs> you just run the command git init, and it starts um, your repo. Um, now, when you when you first create that repo locally, 
nothing is actually added to uh, your repository. It's actually not tracking anything at that moment. So what you want to do is uh, a git add command. And notice how I have git add star dot c. That's going to track any any uh, programs, any dot c programs in that folder, and uh, track it for changes in the future. Um, in addition, I can, you know I can add anything else that I want. Um, one thing I will usually do is just git add star, so I can just add. I can just have version control track every single thing inside my repository. Um, or you might want to just uh, you might want to start off by cloning a repository that's already out there. Uh, your changes uh, essentially you have your untracked. So when you do get in it, you're gonna have nothing's being tracked. You're gonna add um, things to your repository, um, and that will they will still be un uh, unmodified uh, as you make those changes. You, they will be modified, and again, you uh, will commit those uh, modified changes to your staged environment. Um, there's also an interesting file called the git ignore file, and this is a good example for a WordPress site. Uh, if somebody wanted to um, track a whole WordPress site and put, put it all on a version control, so essentially, we're going to ignore log files, HT access files, a sitemap. Um, a good example is uh, the WP content uh, backup files and um, uh, like WP content uh, cache. These are things that uh, essentially could clutter up your repository, and those are things you kind of want to keep in mind when um, making a, a repository. Um, another thing that I've been ignoring a lot in my repositories is um, I use a build tool called Grunt, and it essentially creates a lot of uh, build files and application files in my repository. So what I do is I ignore that whole folder to make sure my repository is not getting cluttered. Um, <clears throat> okay, so expanding on git add. A little bit more again, it's, igno it's ignoring the, anything that's in Git Ignore. Um, we can add um, any file we want. Get add uh, any any. We can have it track any CSS file. We can have it track every everything in the repository. The last one is pretty interesting. Git add dash p. That allows us to um, go line by line in, in our uh, uh, commits. And it will ask us, okay, hey, this was changed. Do you do you want to add this? Um, after you've added everything um, then you're, that you wanted to, you are ready to commit. Um, obviously, you can just run git commit, or you can run git commit dash m, and that and just put quotes uh, in your uh, that the m stands for message. But um, if you do that, it'll. Essentially, when you do git commit, it brings you to another prompt and asks you to put a little uh, comment in with your commit. Um, putting dash m allows me, you to skip that step and just write it in one line. Um, git status lets you know what the uh, current state of your repository is. So if you have uh, files that are uh, that are modified but haven't been committed yet. It'll let you know. It'll let you know what branch you're in. Um, things like that. Now, git log is something that I really didn't appreciate until I mo moved to the terminal. Um, so if you do a basic git log, it'll kind of look like it's a lot of information. Uh, one thing I do to kind of shorten that up is git log dash dash one line. Keeps it all, puts it all on one line, makes it easy to read. Um, git log one line graph is also really interesting because it allows me to see the path that my branches have taken over time. Uh, git ref log is also a very interesting uh, way to uh, see the history of your uh, of what you've done. And essentially, what, what's the difference between ref log and these others? Uh, these other logs is that um, ref log essentially tracks every single time you've made made a change to the the head state 
of your repository. And again, um, let's, if you've cloned a repository, essentially you only have your, your master branch at that moment. So, um, but if I do a commit or I make a change or anything like that, it's, it's gonna note it there. If I make another branch, which we'll get into in a second, um, if I switch between the two or combine them in any way, it will also note that. Um, now, one of the biggest fears, I think, with uh, using Git is that it's very challenging to undo something. And uh, again, going back to Git ref log, uh, if you'll notice in that example at the bottom, I know it's a little bit hard, hard to read, but um, it says, hey, this was the last thing you did, this is the thing you did before that, this is the thing you did before that. So git reset, if you, if you uh, type in git reset uh, dash dash hard head at one or whatever number you want, it will essentially roll back to that exact version. So one thing that I've, uh, that I've done is I've added a new, I've added a global command to my uh, git. It's essentially, and I add it, I do it with the, that bottom line below, but git config dash dash global alias undo, um, and the reset hard head at one. That essentially just backs up the state of the repository one version. So essentially the last thing that I did, it takes, it, it undo, undoes it. So if I did, um, if I merged with another branch and something blew, uh, blew up or exploded, I can just uh, run git undo and it just does the last thing that, uh, or goes back to the last state I was at. Um, working with uh, remote repositories, um, again, that's up to you um, which one you wanna use. There's advantages to each. Um, so essentially, you, to add a remote repository, just do git remote add and come up with a name for it and then um, add your remote repository, and any time you can fetch the changes from your live repository. Um, so again, I might be I might pull down the project HTML5 boilerplate, and there might be some changes on the live version, and I might want to go pull those down to my uh, local current local version. Uh, tags are also pretty interesting. I won't dive into detail with these, but essentially, uh, what a lot of people will do is they a branch they'll use branches. Uh, to actually add features onto their repository or their project, and they'll use tags to indicate the version number. So if they decided that, hey, this feature is really cool, it's gonna come out on, uh, it's gonna be on version 2.2, then they might then they would tag those changes um, with uh, v2.2. Okay, so I just to make sure all this is kind of clear, I'm gonna do a quick demo, and I'm hoping this looks okay. So essentially, I've cloned HTML5 boilerplate um, down to uh, a, lo a local repository. So at any time, I can say git status. Can you change the color of your terminal? Yeah, let me see. Okay, okay, I know what to do. I'm gonna go back to the classic. Thank you. Yeah, that's what works a little better. Okay, 
So I've already cloned this down. Um, so essentially, I can run git status at any time. And I may spell on status wrong. OK, so it's saying, again, I'm on branch master. Um, let's say I wanted to make a change to um, my index.html file. So I'm going to vim into it. And let's just say I made a basic change. Um, if I run git status again, it's going to say, hey, you've modified this file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git add. And I'm, I'm going to say git add star. And I'm going to essentially add every single change that I've made. Um, and then I'm going to commit those changes. And it, it's uh, there. I've added it in. And then I can run a git log. And I can, again, this is that git log I told you about. And again, there's a lot. It, it kind of looks a little cluttered here. I generally like to use um, git log one line. And again, notice I've cloned this repository from uh, a, a live uh, a, a project that's been around for a long time. But you can see that here's all the changes that have been made to it in the past. And then here's my first add commit, OK? Um, so we'll jump into another demo again in a little bit here. But um, diving into that second problem, uh, one of the, uh, basically one of the bigger problems was uh, keeping our, our repositories organized. So again, with um, this is one. This is basically when I realized this was a problem. I had a repository where I had over a thousand commits, and that's actually uh, pretty crazy when you think about it. That's just a lot of wasted time, uh, constantly committing and um, pushing things to a live repository uh, without actually testing things locally. So again, um, try to make sure your projects are running locally uh, when using this, and that will save you time in the end as well. Um, the way the branching works, uh, just to give a, ba a basic overview, um, you can say git branch testing. That's going to make a new branching, t uh, a new branch called test testing, and then you're going to say git checkout to go to that branch. When you first create it, you'll notice that they're both pointing to the, the same place. Because again, whenever you create a new branch, it takes the current state of your master branch and um, points it to the same place. Um, and again, um, now that you have two branches, you can switch between the two. So just keep in mind, whichever branch you're on, um, that's the only thing you can make changes to currently. Um, OK, so this is a little bit more in depth. But let's say we had uh, a branch called issue 53. And you can see uh, the, down there in the bottom right. Or, so you can see there's two branches. Um, so again, they're in two different states. So what we what we're gonna what we can do is uh, uh, commit our changes for that top branch on the right there, and and then uh, merge it with our master branch. Um, so now we have master up there, and we have um, our issue that it was not merged with our master branch there at the bottom. So when I go ahead and um, merge these, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my ma master branch and say git merge my issue back into, once I fixed it, back into my uh, master repository. And again, uh, uh, what basically what it does is, is it goes to a common ancestor and combines the two. And if there's any problems, um, it will let you know. Um, one thing to also know is that a lot of repositories uh, run with something called fast forward. Uh, so essentially what that means is um, once you commit your changes back into your master branch, it gets rid of uh, your, some of your, uh, it, get, it gets rid of your branch changes. So essentially it looks very linear. And I'll show you an example of that here in the uh, near future. Um, 
again, get, get, if you have any conflicts, it'll let you know. And you can use, um, there's tools out there that let you go line by line saying, hey, th which, this, there's a conflict here, which version uh, were you wanting to use? Or you can either choose one or the other, or you can uh, write a new line that uh, combines the two. Um, so I'm, I'm going to jump ahead here and go, uh, go to rebase. Um, rebase is the other command that's extremely similar to merge. Uh, essentially what rebase does is um, it lets you take something that's, uh, I, the, the way I use it is if it's something bran is branched out pretty far, and if, for instance, notice how that ma our master is at the top there. Our, our feature one is in the middle, and our, and our, sec our uh, second feature is at the bottom. Now let's say on my master repository, I want to launch feature two, but I'm not ready to launch feature one yet. And notice how feature two actually does have some of the, the code changes that feature one does, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, uh, I'm going to run the command git rebase onto, uh, or basically, sorry. I'm going to go into my feature two branch, okay? And then I'm going to say git rebase onto master um, this branch. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking that feature that's at the bottom there, and I'm moving it to my, to my, uh, uh, to my master branch. And that, al that allows me to take that, uh, those small uh, code, the code snippets from feature one and move them back into master. Um, again, I, I merge everything over, and uh, at past that, I can take any, uh, uh, whenever I'm ready, I can rebase that first feature, okay? Um, the one thing with rebase to note is that if you push to a live origin, um, you should not rebase. And it's, the reason why is uh, rebase is essentially a way of uh, rewriting history. And when essentially if somebody's downloaded that, you're kind of you're taking something that's structured in a certain way and, and rebuilding it. So if somebody's based a lot based a lot of changes on that, then you could be messing them up. So just keep that in mind. Um, one of the other the other things I have here is uh, organizing. Um, Essentially, uh, when you're working locally, you can make a lot of changes, and it can be, be, you know, extremely long. Again, I had a repository one time that had over a thousand commits. So, uh, running a command called uh, git commit amend lets you change your last commit, and past past that, you can also do a git rebase um, to uh, dash i and head to as many versions back as you need, um, essentially letting you um, make several changes to your history. Um, again, this is something that you want to do before um, pushing up to a live repository. So uh, I might I have made a bunch of fixes to Internet Explorer, right, on my project, um, and I might have over 100 commits locally. But what I want to do is organize that and make sure that each commit that I make is very uh, purposeful. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of what entails, or what that entails, I'll show you a quick demo again. So here's another uh, here's here's another uh, copy of HTML5 boilerplate that I brought over. Um, so what I want to do, I mean, I have a master branch, right? So what I want to do is I want to make a, a new branch for um, fixing an IE change. So 
I want to do git branch um, fix IE. And that's created a new branch for me. I'm going to do git checkout fix. Now I'm going to switch to my uh, fix IE e branch. I'm going to go ahead and edit um, a file. Okay, so I made a quick edit. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, add those changes. And then I'm going to commit them. Okay, so now I've made changes to my branch. So what I want what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my master branch. And now I want to merge the changes I made in this uh, fix IE branch over to uh, my master branch. So I'm going to run git merge. And I'm actually going to do something um, uh, a little a little different. I'm going to run that dash dash no um, dash dash no forward command or no fast forward. Oh, sorry. I have to say what branch I want to merge to. So this is uh, it's asking me to type in a, uh, to type in a message. Uh, it automatically says merge branch fix IE. So I think that's fine. And now if I run git log one line graph, you can see that same history. You can say, see all that same history from the repository before, but now I have. Uh, you can see that I branched off to the side and I've added an IE fix and then I merged it back into fix IE. Now, this is a, an extremely uh, basic example, but um, what this really helps with understanding what versions you can roll back to. So, for instance, I, can, I, I would usually assume that this is a stable state to move back to and that this would also be a safe state. So you'll uh, have that throughout your project where you've branched out and you have uh, a side project going on and you merge back in and usually that signifies a launch. So um, that can help you a lot with um, understanding um, your repository and uh, what's going on. Okay, so one other thing I do want to show off really quick is uh, git ref log. Essentially, since we've uh, started this uh, presentation, there are five changes to the head state that we've made. Um, uh, we've cloned it, we've um, uh, checked out um, another branch, we've ran a commit, checked it out, and then uh, again, and then merged it. So. Let's say um, I want to go back to an older version. I can um, I can uh, go ahead and run the. Co oh, let me see here. I can run that. I, m I mentioned this in this, uh, one of the slides earlier, but I can run git ref log, or get, get, sorry, get reset, hard, head, at, and 
and I want to go back to um, the my very first state where I clone the repository. Now if I run that same command that I was running earlier, you can see that that branch is completely gone. Okay. So again, um, what's very nice about Git is that it allows, it allows you to uh, rewrite history. And as long as you haven't committed to your live uh, repository yet, you can go back and clean things up and make, and make sure everything looks good um, before committing. Uh, the last thing I want to go over is uh, the debugging fe features built into Git. Um, one of the, uh, there's only two that I found to be very useful. One is git blame. Um, and you can run uh, this command in your repository uh, just saying git blame dash L signifying the lines. Um, so I want to see who has written lines, uh, the code from lines 12, uh, 12 to 22 on this file, okay? So essentially it will list out um, who's committed those changes, when they were committed, and um, what the line of co code is to the side. So essentially if you've found, uh, essentially if you're working on a big project with the team, uh, you can, and you found an error in the code, you want to inform that person, hey, I think you could do this in a, a way that's a little bit better. So you go ahead and, and run that command to see who wrote that code so you can go talk to them and make sure that they're informed for the future. The other tool that I use is git bisect. And essentially what bisect does is if, there, if you have found an error in your code, and, but you're not sure when it was introduced. So again, you have had a long history of changes. Um, you know, again, it could be a thousand commits. So how do you find out where the error was first first introduced? Um, a lot of the times you're just playing that guessing game, but Git bisect um, solved that problem for me. And this is actually the main reason I moved over to the terminal. I just like the way that, how simple it is. Um, so essentially you give it a starting point and uh, where it's, it's, uh, that's a bad commit and you say, and this is when it was good. And then it'll essentially um, go to the middle and say, hey, is this, still, is this still broken here? You say yes or no, and then it keeps on dividing it in half so that way um, you find where uh, your error was introduced sooner. Um, so I will run a, a quick demo of that as well. Essentially, I've realized that there is a problem with uh, HTML5 Boreboot for it, right? Um, essentially, there I see the uh, dreaded white screen. Um, something's been horribly broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm basically going to say get bisect start. That's going to start the uh, bisect process. And um, essentially, I'm going to say that this is a bad commit, or this is where an error exists. So I, I, cause I'm starting on my where I, my current state is. So get um, now, um, I know where my bad uh, I know where my bad commit exists, and it's on. Um, all right, I, I know where it actually works. So I go to git bisect good, um, and the commit was d three c e six e. Now it's dice. It's it's already um, 
divide it in half, and I'm going to refresh it, and I'm going to say, okay, it's actually good. So get good, or get bisect good. It's dividing it in half again. I still notice that it's everything's fine. So get bisect good. And now it's broken. Um, so I found the change, so I'm going to say get bisect bad. And now it tells me exactly what commit caused the error, and I did submit that error. Um, and it lets, it lets it, again, it lets me know exactly what caused the error. Um, one thing to keep in mind for Git is that it's not necessarily a backup for your websites. It's a history of changes that you've made to a project. So make sure that you're running backups through a database uh, SQL dump or um, you know, for files, you might want to do uh, file uh, sync with um, a tool like rsync, which creates snapshots of your site every month or every week, and those, those rules can be set up by you. Um, there are also multiple strategies to version control. Generally, my suggestion is to only put version control on the things that you're editing. Um, so again, you can manage a whole WordPress site on version control but uh, it does it cause a lot of extra commits, and it can be harder to, be, to debug things. So, you, uh, so keep that in mind as well. Um, and don't forget about deployment either. You, have, you can pu publish your changes on GitHub um, or wherever else, and, but you also need to deploy those changes to your server. So um, I've been trying to use a tool recently uh, called Capistrano which uh, is a free tool, but there are also other um, uh, repositories such as uh, Beanstalk that actually take care of the deployment to the server for you, or DeployHQ that um, only does deployment. Um, and again, uh, one thing that I really suggest is that you research this yourself. Um, the book that I read um, to prep myself uh, for this presentation is Pro Git, and it is an extremely uh, powerful book, and it goes into all the details of um, exactly everything that I talked about. Okay. Um, well, that's it. that's it for me. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I have. If, if anybody has a quick question, I'll be here. Uh, I can take one question. I can take one. What I want to try to understand. Oh yeah, can you have the mic? What I want to try to understand is um, how Git tracks changes for folders. So, for instance, if you have a Git repository for folders that you've deleted, renamed, moved around, can you go back to a particular version where the folders that were deleted were stored? Okay, so that's a very good question. Um, the, the question is essentially if you've moved files around um, or folders or direct, uh, directories, um, is it very easy to just jump back to that, that point in time? Um, essentially it is with you running git rebase. Essentially that's going back to that, that previous state that you had. Uh, the only problem is that if you commit those changes to your master branch and then push them to your live repo, essentially it would be a bad idea to, re to rebase, and that just means to essentially rewriting history and going back to a current state. Um, essentially because somebody could have downloaded those uh, changes that you pushed up, especially if you're collaborating with the team, um, and then when you push your changes up, your rebase changes, then they're going to get a lot of problems. So essentially what you want to do to solve this problem is you can actually rebase locally at any time and see exactly uh, what the state of that directory is. And then you can copy the changes as needed, uh, you know, go back to your current version and then copy whatever needs to be um, in your current directory. So essentially instead of going back in time, you're adding a new commit to your repository. But essentially, it's, it's, it's kind of doing the same thing, but it keeps things moving forward. Um, 
hope that answers your question. Okay. I'm, I'm over here if, if uh, anybody has any questions, okay? Thank you very much.